That's 5,500 miles. 5,500 miles. Okay, we're going to do a little tutorial on uh, direct injection. We still have in the tank a lift pump, a traditional fuel pump that will bring fuel as far as the high pressure direct injection pump at 50, 52 pounds to this point. From here, this is driven off of uh, three lobes on the camshaft. It has a plunger that goes down in and it brings it to 2,000 plus PSI and then it is distributed into each one of these fuel injectors that inject the fuel directly into the combustion chamber which is why we have no fuel and as you can see look at all this this oil here you know there's look at look at all the oil just on the on the port openings where it's settling on the bottom there yep and that's why we have this issue with the intake valve coping. Any compounds other than just the PCV uh, crankcase pressure alone and some unburnt fuel, a little bit of water vapor can pass through harmlessly, is no longer being washed and cleaned by a port injector. And that's why this is such a big issue. And contrary to what the naysayers say, there's not a single automaker out there yet with a gasoline engine that has any solution that is preventing or even cutting down to a substantial amount to make a difference in the intake valve coking deposit issue. Now, examining this at 5,000, what did you say, 52? 5,500. 5,500 miles, which this isn't even you know, into its first scheduled oil change, although uh, this gentleman was smart enough to get the break-in oil out of there right away and to put a premium oil. He's running AMS oil. I like Penn's oil Platinum. AMS oil is excellent. Um, we are probably at the 2 to 3 percent degradation of the volumetric efficiency of that valve to be able to evenly flow air into the combustion chamber without disruption and vortices. So you're going to notice uh, before long, if you haven't already, a little rougher idle than it had before. You're going to notice a little less power. <clears throat> and as if this was left alone, this will only get worse by 20,000 miles. You probably have had a six to eight degrade, uh, percent degradation in the uh, efficiency of the motor. Yeah, and that's, I mean, you got to figure that's eight to twelve horsepower I've lost at two to three percent. Correct. So, uh, even a little bit more, more like nine to thirteen. And I'm going to point out again that we did not have the air box in the baffles and oil traps full of any oil. We had a very small amount of oil in them. So running one quart low on the dry sump has eliminated probably 95, 98 percent of that oil ingestion that was burping from it. This would be the same as a Z52, a wet sump engine. All of this has come from the standard PCB system alone, not from the dry sump burping. Okay, what we're doing here is, uh, due to the severity of the intake coking in such low miles, while we've got this apart, we're going to do a manual intake valve cleaning. And what we've done to begin with is we first want to... ...any of the sand and debris that automatically, naturally, will get on any engine. We've taped off every one of the cylinders that we're not going to be working on, the ports. We do not want to get any of this hard abrasive debris into any of the ports. And we brought this one up to top dead center, number one. So the intake valve is closed, and we're going to, to begin with 
blow out any debris that might be in there. And we're now going to begin. Now this can be done with a die grinder and a long stem with a stainless brush set. Or as I'm doing here, I'm using a cordless drill as that's what most do-it-yourselfers are going to have. So we're going to go inside here. And I'm going to come from the other side so I can see. And we're just going to gently go around all the deposits and clean those loose, blowing them out with the compressed air now. So get a bright light on here for me. Okay. Yep. Now what's going to happen is this brush is going to be able to get around to the back side as well. So the valve does not need to be rotated. We just want to make sure that we're getting all the deposits clear. Get that light a little bit more. There, there. This will not damage the valve. They're case hardened. Extremely strong. They will not scratch. And the nice thing here is we're not dealing with twenty, thirty thousand dollar or miles worth of uh, debris build up. Build up. Okay, we're using a bigger brush now so that we can do just an overall cleaning of everything. Making sure that we've got everything, including the port, because there will be deposits on the port itself. But the main thing is the valve tulip, the valve stem, and the seat. And as you can see, this brush gets around the back side as well. Forceps. <laughs> there we go. Ha! All right, now watch your eyes. That looks good. We're going to... Compressed air. We don't want comp any of this debris to get into other ports. And how are we looking? Looks good. Okay, we should have it pretty much done. Javier, if you want to try to get in there with the video. So we can see what it looks like. I'm also going to...